Mumbai, the city where the speed of life often overtakes time. The city which has grown many folds in multiple aspects. An ancient port city which emerged on the world map owing to its business and trade. As skyline of the city expanded, thousands kept adding to its population. Over the years, one aspect which has grown at a massive pace has been its traffic. Well, we pay road tax, but we just don't get to use roads as happily as we would uh, like to. And I think that's the story of everyone who stays and drives and uh, travels in our great city. With city roads choked with traffic, putting brakes on the fast lane, an architectural marvel was carved on the waters to reclaim Mumbai's pace. Earlier, Mumbai's, what was Mumbai's lead motif? One was Gateway of India, second was the Marine Drive. Now, the moment Mumbai picture comes, it is the ceiling which, which actually comes as the motif of Mumbai. A masterpiece displaying India's excellence in civil engineering, a human story built with concrete and steels. Look high, you look up and it's, it's 100 meters plus you know, structure and you, you drive through that and that's my, uh, that's my personal favorite. A bridge over her seas, the Bandra Worli ceiling. For years before this bridge came into being, this red-coloured line on a map depicting heavy traffic was a regular feature on Mahim Causeway. The only road connecting western suburbs to central and southern Mumbai. Life was not so on a fast lane in the Millennium City. The traffic was also a never-ending challenge before the civic agencies. The city grew northwards continuously, number one. And uh, when it started, original Mumbai city is from uh, Kulaba, Kaf Parade, to Sion. And beyond Sion, uh, last 50 years, it has been exponential expansion, like from Bandra to Dahisar, on the western line, and on the uh, central line up to uh, Mulund. So this expansion was actually uh, catered to by two expressways, what is called Western Expressway and second was the Eastern Expressway. This Western Expressway caters to the 70% traffic, 70% of the suburban traffic stays on the western suburbs. Bandra, then you have uh, Parle, Andheri, Jogeshwari, Goregaon, Malad, Borivali, Dahisar, so it's huge. Now, this expressway, Western Expressway, when it was uh, constructed in 65-69, by the year 2000, within 30 years of its commissioning, it almost became a local road. It was a 60-meter wide uh, road, which was conceived in 65, both the expressway, whether it is Eastern, because Eastern started from Sion and it went to Thane. So, both these expressways uh, were conceived in uh, or started, land commission was started in 65, and uh, by 69 they were commissioned and uh, that actually spurred the entire suburban expansion in Mumbai. I think it's only getting crazier. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the way the BMC functions uh, is something that is perhaps designed to make life as miserable as possible for people who drive cars. First of all, the roads are not in a great condition. On top of that, more than 70-80% of the roads, you just step out of any part of the city and roads are perpetually dug up. 
so well we pay road tax but we just don't get to use roads as happily as we would uh, like to and i think that's the story of everyone who stays and drives and uh, travels in our great city whether you're traveling by bus you're traveling by train uh, train is has its own share of problems but when you're on the road whether you're traveling by bus or car taxi rickshaw whatever i mean yeah it's only getting more complicated According to a research conducted in 2018 an average journey takes 65% longer in Mumbai The problem of traffic density also gets complicated for the public transport in metro cities is often overburdened or simply not preferred by public owning cars and other fleet of vehicles I think is that uh, the public transport system in our city hasn't really been promoted well and uh, hasn't really been an enabler for more people to uh, you know try and use public transport i mean all over the world all over the world people are very happy using public transport when i'm talking about that i'm even talking of countries like china i mean europe us is us obviously is not very clear on public transport but when you're talking about europe or you're talking about a whole lot of other countries you know i mean the public transport system is only getting better even when you talk about china you talk about whole lot of asian countries far east countries south asian countries the transport system is only gotten better and tries and reduces congestion like for example when uh, you have uh, you know a good bus you know like a bst bus that travels it takes off so much of load off the roads by 2000 we started looking at mumbai it had already crossed 1 crore population out of that 70 lakh population staying in suburbs and it is only mumbai city we are not adding thane as a sub suburb on the eastern side kallan as a suburb navi mumbai as a suburb bhivandi as a suburb ullasnagar as a suburb and the northern side mira bhaindar and vasi vira are another exponentially growing area huge because mmr uh, almost has 2.5 crore population so uh, it was difficult to cater to the traffic uh, which was originating in the north and coming to the mumbai city because the central business district one is bandra and second is uh, the uh, narimon point the seat of the government is narimon point so it was cons- it was thought in 98 uh, 2000 that we should have a freeway a sea link uh, which will start from varsova on the northern end and go up to narimon point as the urban overgrowth and traffic volume continue to challenge the pace of mumbai cars the authority got to the drawing board and began to work on infusing the breathers in the city commute one of the ideas was the concept of freeways and the expressways what is express express is basically an access control road where uh, traffic can move at a faster pace without any obstruction among the authorities shouldered with the task was the maharashtra state road development corporation or the msrdc whose collective brainstorming led to the foundation of a ceiling simply a bridge over the city sea connecting two urban hubs and in the process providing an alternate route to several thousands of commuters Today the Bandra Valley ceiling connects Mahim interchange from Bandra's end to Valley sea face the bridge has made a massive difference what earlier took nearly 45 minutes from Bandra on the western suburb to Valley a busy district on the south through an old road of Mahim causeway now takes just 8 to 10 minutes Besides taking care of north south traffic movement the Bandravali ceiling has added another laurel in Mumbai's urban landscape It has cut down on traffic time for sure it's made life easier uh, distances have you know become shorter but i only hope that uh, you know it doesn't really become congested like what we have with the bombay pune expressway you know at one point it was supposed to be like a free zone where people could just zip from one end to the other like this and now we all know how congested it has become and sometimes it takes like double the time 
uh, to reach from Bombay to Pune. So I hope that that's not what uh, eventually you know the Bandravodi Sea Link ends up becoming. Well, the principle of uh, generally speaking, building uh, sea links, um, bridges, coastal roads, tunnels is to create peripheral architecture or peripheral infrastructure uh, uh, around uh, a city so as to actually decongest inner city roads, um, reduce pollution, noise pollution, uh, alleviate the substantial traffic requirements. And uh, Mumbai, as you know, is, a, uh, is an island city, but the, the land space is actually very limited. Um, and so what the Bandarwali Sea Link has done in, 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 in part is to is to be part of the Garland Ring Road of Mumbai. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the connectivity from South Bombay via the Mahim route to the northern and western suburbs, which used to basically take about an hour, hour and a half at peak traffic, you know, catering to about a lakh, lakh and a quarter vehicles uh, per day, has now been reduced to about 20 minutes. Um, uh, so th these are the, the fundamental benefits of improving the quality of life <clears throat> for the average Mumbaiker to say nothing of the fact that once you create iconic structures like BWSL, they add to the, to the beauty and the skyline of, uh, of Mumbai. It was decided that it will be in phases. We should start uh, on the uh, southern portion first because first was the Mahim Creek. Right across Mahim Creek you go and uh, we do this ceiling first. Uh, if we look at uh, the phases, Nariman Point to Worli would have been one phase, uh, or Nariman Point to Haji Ali, Haji Ali to Worli, Worli to Bandra, and Bandra to Warsaw. Out of that, uh, Worli Haji Ali, uh, sorry, Worli Bandra ceiling was done. Worli Bandra ceiling was specifically done because the bottleneck is Mahim Junction when you come from the north side, and uh, the entire uh, bottleneck continues up to Prabhadevi or Worli. And you have a very interesting uh, phenomenon, what takes uh, almost an hour to commit that particular. If you take a ceiling, it takes 10 minutes. The bridge is today more than just an urban apparatus, easing traffic, now an identity mark of the city. The Bandravali ceiling is a marvel of engineering technology. Constructed over Mahim Bay, this bridge is the part of first phase of Mumbai's freeway system designed to ease traffic. With the project yielding favourable results and desired objectives in easing city life, expect some more such ceilings in the maximum city in the days to come. From Worli up to Worli side, uh, on the southern side we have the ceiling. From Worli to Nariman Point or Marine Drive for that matter, a coastal road is coming up. So uh, free connectivity, again access controlled. Uh, getting up to the South Mumbai. Now, we have been assigned work of connecting the North. The first part of the North connectivity is from Bandra to Warsaw. The existing ceiling, the ceiling portion is 4 kilometers and the connectors are 1.6 kilometers, that is 5.6 kilometers. Uh, the new ceiling that uh, we have already uh, started working on, in fact, we are given the work order also. Uh, preparatory work is over, all the environment clearance, forest clearance, everything is in place. Uh, CRZ clear, so uh, work mobilization is complete. Uh, that is from Bandra to Warsaw. Uh, that is 9.5 kilometers of ceiling and 8.2 kilometers of connectors. So this ceiling should be in place in another five years. Absolutely fabulous. We need more of such. You know, we're very happy just constructing one eight kilometer ceiling, uh, but that's like an old story. You have countries where they've constructed 30, 40, 50 kilometer ceilings virtually connecting two nations. If I'm not mistaken, in Europe, I think Sweden and Denmark or I think two countries are connected by a huge, huge uh, ceiling. China has uh, like multiple, multiple ceilings. So I don't see a reason why we cannot do that uh, without obviously harming the coastal zone and, you know, kind of uh, uh, polluting the sea and damaging water resources. I'm sure if we were to apply and you know there's no dearth of resources, there's no dearth of money or I don't think there's any reason why we can't do it. But what makes this gigantic wonder really special? A first of its own kind bridge in India to be built on the open seas. The primary purpose of infrastructure is to improve the quality of life. Of the, of the citizens of the, of, of the city. Uh, uh, I think that uh, at the same time, 
infrastructure needs to actually mesh with the beauty of a city to enhance its value right um, you know and and it's incidental that the uh, that the value of real estate in a city gets enhanced by the number of landmarks one one has the project to build india's first ever bridge over the seas which is also the first ever to use cable state technique of balance and ornamentation was undertaken by state owned maharashtra state road development corporation Established in the year 2000, the state government's Pioneer Civic Agency is responsible for developing, building, and maintaining road across Mumbai and state of Maharashtra. See, MSRDC was a pioneer in it in India because we started thinking about it almost 20 years before 1998, and uh, the first clearances we got was in 2000. The CRZ clearance for uh, ceiling was got in 2003. Uh, it the pace could have been much faster, uh, but uh, yes, we did. First ceiling was inaugurated in 2010. Uh, worldwide, uh, such ceilings are there. Uh, whether you, uh, in fact, uh, when I had an opportunity to see the Inchon Bridge, a nine-kilometer bridge, uh, where you go to sail, for, especially for a city like Mumbai, which is almost it is uh, agglomeration of uh, seven islands, which is covered on three sides. Uh, Uh, by water basically sea and creek water so it's uh, there's no alternate and hinterland is extremely uh, uh, important for us because th- that is the only place where we are growing but the construction of this massive edifice was entrusted upon the hindustan construction company limited or the hcc one of india's oldest and most reputed engineering and construction giant hcc has constructed major landmark infrastructure projects across the country uh, contributed to nearly a third of india's hydroelectric capacity uh, over 60% of india's nuclear reactors uh, 3800 kilometers of roads and expressways uh, 375 bridges i think that we've probably bridged nearly every river uh, in india and uh, about 330 kilometers of very complex tunneling work mostly in the himalayan range I think what differentiates uh, HCC and makes uh, our company quite distinct is our sheer desire to take on the most complex uh, and challenging uh, of engineering construction jobs. Going back 94 years, the Hindustan Construction Company Limited has constructed large-scale civil engineering and infrastructure projects like the expressways, highways, tunnels, bridges, and even the hydro and nuclear power plants across the country. Besides Mumbai's ceiling, the HCC also built India's longest rail cum road project, the Bogibil Bridge over River Brahmaputra in Assam. Since the completion of the Bandra Valley ceiling, uh, three landmark projects come to mind: the longest tunnel, uh, India's longest railway tunnel at Pir Panjal, uh, a few years ago. and uh, then in the last year two projects inaugurated by our prime minister uh, the bogibil bridge which is the longest rail cum road bridge in assam again across the river brahmaputra and uh, the kishan ganga hydroelectric project one of the largest and most complex epc projects undertaken and that was done across the line of control but the construction was not limited to just these two groups best and chosen experts from around the world were consulted as well as tasked in construction at several stages While the UK based Dar consultants worked on designs for the MSRDC experts from nearly dozen odd countries were roped in to contribute in the making of the sea link Oh I mean, there was uh, we we had uh, uh, a number of partners uh, experts service providers uh, on the project we had technical experts you know uh, from singapore uh, we had um, uh, uh, service providers uh, on on the design side from various countries in the world uh, we had suppliers of uh, our bearings of our cables of our um uh, materials and cement uh, both in india and abroad so uh, it was a very diverse set 
of, uh, of people and companies that we had to work with to achieve this project. This bridge, the way you look at today, uh, this ceiling, it was not the way it is there. It is not the way it was designed initially. In fact, it went through a number of iterations. I suppose this is uh, the uh, third or fourth final, in fact, third final design and then some improvements. Uh, even the cable state portion, uh, the kind of steel that will be used, the steel from where it will be imported, the technology to be used, all those things uh, that started uh, from 2002 and uh, stabilized somewhere in 2006. Uh, there were other challenges. Actually, technology was one. Uh, what kind of technology should be used? What kind of expertise should be used? Uh, we had dark consultants as our consultants at the point of time. So, uh, naturally, we didn't have any consultants who had origin in India who could have constructed this kind of place. So, consultants, we had collaboration of consultants. The project, given its scale and dimensions, was beset with several challenges. Even before the construction began, the agencies and the partners involved conducted elaborate surveys of the seabed. As this bridge is built on a sensitive ecological zone of Mahim Bay, special care was to be taken to preserve and safeguard the environment. The marine geology underneath the bridge consists of basalts, volcanic tufts, brachias and other sedimentary rock deposits. The experts and environmentologists got down to work on the seabed to make it conducive for building a mammoth bridge whose conception itself was a challenge even before the construction began. A lot of uh, NGOs and uh, well-meaning people and uh, uh, having uh, some uh, apprehensions to address that because social, see, uh, in all infrastructure projects it is extremely important to address the social concerns. So that was also a big challenge. Actually our delay was not on account of technology. When we started constructing in 2007, because 2007 we actually started the work and completed in 42 months. So technology was not a challenge. Choice of technology, yes, it took some time. It took almost a year for uh, evaluating various options and uh, source of material. Because if you look at the uh, steel used and the kind of uh, technology which was placed, uh, put into place, it, is, uh, it was quite different. It was never used in India at that point. It was the first of its kind project that was done uh, in the open sea. So I think that we certainly learned uh, many things as we, we moved along and we had our fair share, share of challenges, certainly. Um, just to give you a, an analogy, I mean, we take for granted working uh, on land. And it's a stable platform where we, we, we sit, we talk, we converse, we eat, we read, we. We, we watch our uh, children play with their toys and, and do their uh, geometry homework. I think that you can, you can imagine the, the, the tremendous task of actually having constructed uh, this project out in the open sea. So uh, from the foundation works to the, uh, the superstructure works, uh, all of it having been completed, uh, on effectively a, uh, an unstable platform, so to speak, was the real challenge. The incidental aspects uh, like delays in environmental clearances, um, you know, uh, which the state government um, you know, dealt with fairly admirably and finally got that through, were, were incidental. The real challenge, I think, was the fact that we were working out in the open sea. Being a first of its own kind in the open seas, the bridge has three essential segments. The pillars, the deck and the cable stayed portions whose pylons were designed with complex geometry. Another feature of this 8-lane twin carriageway bridge is that it's designed and built to withstand winds ranging even 125 km per hour over the Arabian Sea. It's also the first infrastructure project in Mumbai to use seismic arresters which firmed its grip on the seabed and enabled it to withstand earthquake measuring up to 7.0 on the Richter scale. And when I say open sea, we're talking about uh, Mumbai monsoon climactic conditions. I mean, when, when, you know, it's not uh, uh, certainly by any stretch of the imagination uh, 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 stable. So the surveying work, which needed to be tremendously precise, the transportation of uh, 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 people, machinery, 
uh, the launching of equipment, uh, again, all of it needing to be tremendously precise, uh, inspiring our workforce, even though this project was, was done uh, in, in Mumbai, the fact is that it is actually a remote site. I mean, you know, where do you go on your tea break? You're, 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 you're marooned at this site. Um, so I think from a point of view of uh, even the psychological makeup of, of, of you know, uh, managing our teams, inspiring our people to stay focused, to maintaining the highest standards of safety uh, was, 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 a, was a major challenge. See, building bridge of this kind in 2003 was itself a challenge, number one. Number two, uh, how do you do it? Because, you know, you are right on the uh, Arabian Sea. It's open sea. We are on the mouth of the creek. So, you have huge tidal effect also on that, number one. Uh, number two, the design of uh, cable state, which was never done in India. So, it was done in China, and then it was, uh, the steel was sourced from Japan. All those challenges uh, were very unique at that point of time. Running 5.6 kilometers in end-to-end -end length, the magnitude of this rupees 1600 crore wonder can be estimated from its construction. It weighs nearly 50,000 fully grown African elephants and the steel wires used in the project can go around the circumference of our earth. The scale here is amazingly whopping. We had 3,000 workers on the ground. Uh, we had uh, professionals and experts and partners from, uh, from nearly 12 countries uh, in the world uh, collaborate on this project and I think that there's uh, a lot of pride in the fact that you had uh, folk from different cultures speaking different languages with one thing in common which is a love of engineering, uh, bring them together to achieve uh, 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 our masterpiece. What makes this bridge an engineering masterpiece is how it overcame challenges, starting with maritime ecology. As its foundation was laid on the seabed, highly variable geotechnical conditions of the seabed posed massive challenges. Sometimes the problems were as acute as highly uneven foundation bed, where the piers were to be placed. Further complication included the presence of veritable intertidal zone, with the parts of foundation bed exposed in low tide and submerged in high tide. But step by step, these challenges were overcome. Uh, three phases, uh, planning phase. Uh, the uh, second phase was the foundation works. And the third was the superstructure, which is, you know, the, the deck and everything that came above. Uh, the foundation works, as I've, as I've said, was, was tremendously challenging because we were out in the open sea. You know, we had to drill uh, 164 piles uh, at, at very, very precise intervals along to create the legs, you know, for the superstructure that came above and uh, sometimes as deep as 30 meters into the seabed in very, very volatile conditions, and, you know, uh, in, in, in dealing with uh, 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 in the open sea uh, monsoon conditions and tides and so on and so forth. Again, the, the precision uh, of doing that from an engineering perspective was very, very high. Uh, the superstructure that came on the top, again, a 20,000 metric ton uh, carriageway, uh, to be able to construct that in three different parts and to make sure that the connectivity when it when everything got together was was very precise was the second part and as I've as, as I've said the 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 diamond shape pylon geometry uh, you know uh, where the assembling of the cables and the uh, the construction of the support structures for the 124 meter high mast uh, was was needed to have been done with with such precision such that the you know when the support structure took the weight 
of the superstructure, it would actually be uh, uh, perfectly aligned. One by one, each column was planted meticulously by this giant machine drilling under the seabed. Several of these columns were erected to complete one single pier. Going below as deep as 30 meters under the seabed, these 500 tons concrete pillars placed 50 meters apart from each other carries the weight of a deck formed by prefabricated structures forming the concrete deck of a bridge. Once pillars were laid, these prefabricated concrete blocks were laid by giant launching trusses. Fifteen such segments were laid step by step between the two pillars. These blocks were joined by steel wires and then firmed up by concrete adhesives. Talking about the width and margins of the bridge, each section of the ceiling is meant for four lanes of traffic, complete with concrete barriers and service sidewalks on one side. Complex geometry too has been infused in the design with meticulous precision. The alignment is defined with vertical and horizontal curves, all compatible with aerodynamics. Drilling 164 uh, piles, uh, the legs uh, of, of the bridge on which the superstructure sat, uh, was the other aspect of complex engineering where again you're working in the open sea with you know monsoon patterns with tides and you're drilling sometimes as deep as 30 meters down into the seabed um, and to, to do that with the kind of consistency uh, with the highest uh, uh, demands of quality and safety was probably I would say the, 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 the other uh, uh, huge engineering challenge for us. But what stands out on this bridge is its cable state portion. The ceiling has two cable state portion, one on the Bandra channel and the other on Worli channel. Both the portions are designed with absolute precision, keeping in mind the dimensions, geology and the aerodynamics. In fact, it's the cable state portion which has also made this bridge a visual treat. This is the first cable state bridge. Now we will have actually few more hereafter. Uh, the second cable state bridge uh, was uh, recently inaugurated in Nagpur. Another cable state bridge is coming in uh, missing. In fact, in Mun Mumbai Pune Expressway, we are creating a uh, missing. Uh, there, there is a missing link which we are constructing. In that also, there is a 650 meter cable state bridge. You have two, ma two major cable stays. The, the larger cable stay, which is uh, closer to the Bandra end has a, approximately a 600 meter span with two clear channels of 250 meters each and the smaller cable stay at the whirly end has a 350 meter span with a clear channel of 150 meters. Um, that essentially basically is the uh, uh, you know the entire uh, 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 the components of the bridge you have the uh, the foundation works and you have the superstructure and the the pylon which basically rises to about 124 meters in height which supports the larger cable stay forming a triangular crest over its surface this cable stay portion is first of its own kind in india it's also for the first time that a cable stay bridge has been built on the open seas in india The cable state of Banra channel is 500 meters in length and 126 meters high at its vertex, as high as a 43 story tower, and has two 250 meters cables supporting the main spans, flanked by 50 meters conventional approach spans.
In fact, it is this cable stayed channel which supports the superstructure by means of four planes of stay cables in a semi fan arrangement. These aesthetically designed pylons have an extremely complex geometry and forms one of the longest spans for concrete deck. Another benefit of this cable stayed portion is that it allows for a free movement of fishing vessels, boats, and the maritime traffic in Mahim Bay. We have a very, very beautiful aesthetic structure in its, its uh, diamond shaped cable stay, uh, you know, a pylon or the mast, so to speak, of, which is, rises about 124, kilometer, 124 meters in, in, uh, uh, in, in height is supported by, by two legs which are at, at slants and you have a, a, a beautiful diamond that while it's aesthetically very pleasing and what's actually what makes BWSL a, an iconic landmark is an extremely difficult uh, task of engineering. So as soon as you start to actually uh, do construction at a slant and the easier thing to actually do is take a, a stable base and just construct vertically up but you know, perpendicular to your base. Soon as you end up, you know, working at a slant, um, you know, to use an analogy, you're, you're, you're looking to actually con construct those legs like a banana, you know, like a parabola, which when it takes the weight of the 20,000 metric tons of superstructure, it straightens out perfectly. See, this is a 500 uh, meter portion cable straight bridge. In fact, it, it, the cables are actually attached to a pylon. You find that huge pylon. Uh, and then you have steel cables, what you find only uh, uh, lines, they are not simple lines, they, you have huge uh, steel uh, ropes there. Uh, actually this pylon holds the cantilever on either side. You find there are piers down, but those piers are only supporting. What actually holds the pylon is uh, tall and pylon actually in fact this is, this is a pylon and on either side you have those uh, steel ropes. These st steel ropes actually hold the uh, uh, balanced weight of the entire canteen. The channel also had some very peculiar challenges. It was also a crucial test for HCC, the construction partners handling one of the most prestigious as well as complex civil engineering projects. The deck was laid by these 110 meters long launch trusses weighing 1250 metric tons each. These trusses usually crawl mechanically on the surface after a portion of deck was complete. But for building the cable stayed portion, the trusses had to be moved from one end of the approach bridge to the other. As the distance between the approach bridge's last pillar and the central pillar of the cable stayed stretch was 250 meters. Five times the distance of pillars as on the approach bridge. This was a massive problem as lifting 1250 metric tons launch truss on mechanical legs was out of question. Dismantling and reassembling the truss for positioning it on the other end would have taken months, pushing the deadline and the costs further up. There, the HCC got in a giant Asian Hercules, one of biggest floating shear leg screen in the world, weighing 5,900 metric tons. The Asian Hercules, which can lift up to 1,600 metric tons, made tasks much easier for laying the two 250 meters long deck of the cable stayed portion. The launching trusses that were, were, were in place have all been assembled and calibrated to a high degree of precision. Um, so when you, it's, it, I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's not as simple as lifting your, your you know, a, a, a child's 
Lego design and moving it from one place to the other. I mean, you know, the machinery requires to be calibrated to a very, very high degree. Um, and I think that the, the idea itself uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was brilliant to, to, to do that, very bold because it hadn't, you know, we hadn't done that before. And any time when we haven't done something before, uh, there is always a bit of a fear. Uh, but I think that once, you know, the decision was taken to do that, uh, uh, the real uh, challenge was, was actually in the logistics of actually moving from one end to the other and navigating, uh, um, you know, very delicately, you know, over the water and, and through the minefield, as I, as I described. Uh, and we, we got it done. Among the challenges before this massive operation was nature of tides and plethora of BSNL cables on the seabed. The operation of lifting the truss was conducted only in night time as high tide was crucial. By the morning, Asian Hercules moved in the high seas holding the giant truss like a pin. The trusses were finally placed on the whirly end in the night time again when high tide supported the operation. The operation which looked like taking months was complete in the matter of days. The goal was to actually pick up the launching trusses at the Bandra end transport them to the whirly end and have them reinstalled there. Now it sounds very simple, you know, um, you know, you know it, yes. but, uh, but, the, but it, the, the challenge was tremendous because you had, as I said, um, open sea, uh, very, very large equipment, uh, tidal patterns, you had very delicate VSNL cabling on the, on the, on the bed. Uh, and so we had to use the GPS system and uh, ensure that the operation was carried out in many small steps. So it's like a soldier making its way through a minefield. Um, so as to actually end up, you know, moving this carefully to one end to the other and reassembling. That took a few days. Uh, but effectively what we ended up achieving was saving uh, a number of months in the final completion of the project. It's not just the cable state portion which accentuates the aesthetics and architectural laurels of the ceiling. A relatively low cable state twin spans running 350 meters and standing 55 meters above the deck level supports the superstructure at the whirly end of the ceiling. As this marvel over the seas was readying, overcoming several challenges. The city added another laurel on the list of its growing infrastructure while enhancing India's stature in the sphere of civil engineering. We were pioneers in big infrastructure which was based on user fee, uh, creating, in fact, uh, raising finance from market constructing huge infrastructure. We were the pioneers in India. In fact, the first state road development corporation was created in Maharashtra. And after this, uh, such road development corporations were constituted or set up in other states. Uh, now, uh, look at it. India is poised at an infrastructure revolution. You know, the first uh, definitive statement came in the concept of golden quadrilateral. Uh, in 2001, 2004, when we spoke about four leaning of 5,700 kilometers of uh, golden quadrilateral, like Delhi, Mumbai, uh, Chennai, Kolkata, and Delhi. Uh, now, if you f look at the explosion after Mumbai Pune Expressway or after this, uh, you, we have recently inaugurated a nine kilometer bridge on Brahmaputra. Uh, everywhere, infrastructure is the uh, buzzword and it is going to create great opportunities. India is actually now uh, put into uh, in international circuit. Yes. Great cities and great countries are not just a function of their economic might and their cultural heritage, but you know, a showcase for what they can build and what they can have their citizens really aspire to. So in many ways, the bridge has uh, in some ways 
in many ways has actually improved the quality of life of the average Mumbaiker, but it is so aesthetically and pleasing to look at. At the same time, uh, it, it, it inspires us as Indians to continue to do bigger and greater things. Um, so, in, in besides taking the well wishes and the blessings of so many citizens in Bombay, uh, uh, the, the number of compliments uh, that we have received uh, from well-wishers and partners and stakeholders and JV partners from around the world of, for having accomplished this has truly been tremendous. And I think that we are so proud uh, to have actually uh, uh, accomplished uh, uh, this, uh, this achievement uh, and uh, to, to have provided something uh, so wonderful to uh, the, the city of Mumbai and to India. Another challenge before the makers of ceiling was corrosion due to its proximity to the sea. This was taken care of with a barrier coating by galvanization. The project also features the state-of-art surveillance technology and apparatus for maintaining driving discipline. And after 10 years of hard labour, toil and dedication of over 3,000 workers and nearly 150 engineers, Ceiling was opened for Mumbai. Easing life of several thousand commuters and dying a cost for future civil infrastructure. See, as of today, more than 50,000 vehicles uh, actually use this bridge every day. Both the sides together. And it has eased uh, life so much. In fact, it, the commute between Mahim and Worli, even though the normal road has become a little more tolerable just because of this bridge. Had this bridge not been there, uh, in the last 10 years, you would have found it chaotic uh, to cross uh, Mahim and Prabhadevi and then going to Varli or South Mumbai from this side. In fact, what it has done is it's changed the socio, uh, social and uh, cultural life of the city. Like, I go to Bandra a lot more often than what I used to because the distance is much quicker. I go to Juhu more often than I used to because it's much more quicker. Uh, besides that, I think it's made connectivity easy. You know, I mean, previously, if you had to take a long distance, then trains were uh, ideally what people would look at. But uh, because, you know, road time was like really painful. But now with the ceiling, I think it's just kind of made life a lot easier. I have stayed in all parts of uh, suburban Mumbai. I stayed in Navi Mumbai, I stayed in Thane, I stayed in Gorega. And then I stayed at Nariman Point. Now I stayed uh, Bandra. Now, all this comment, I was not part of MSRDC in 2010 when this bridge was inaugurated. But as a, uh, at those days, I was serving at uh, Andheri. Going from South Mumbai, for going early to uh, Andheri, what was the uh, effort and how it easy it became the moment this bridge was inaugurated, I'm witness to it. So it was, for any Mumbaiker, uh, this bridge was, uh, I suppose, a, a statement of Mumbai having arrived on an infrastructure scene. So I was part of such feeling. Today, the Bandravali ceiling, or the officially known Rajiv Gandhi ceiling, is a prominent landmark of Mumbai. A popular destination for the city residents as well as tourists and even filmmakers. The talk of Mumbai is not just Marine Drive or its famous skyline. The bridge of dreams over her seas has firmly stamped its identity. Yes, there is a lot of excitement, uh, college students come, engineering students come, people want to go, uh, in fact even people want to go up the pylon and see, because you know in pylon, uh, you can rise the entire height of the pylon uh, through a lift, it's very difficult, we don't allow people, but people have that excitement, uh, even uh, they want to film. This is become, you know, this is a, uh, see earlier, Mumbai is, what was Mumbai's lead motive? One was Gateway of India, second was the Marine Drive. Now, the moment Mumbai picture comes, it is the ceiling which, which actually comes as the motive for Mumbai. I think it's fabulous. I think if we can build a Bandravali ceiling, I'm sure we can build many other uh, ceilings and many other bridges and many other flyovers. You know, we also have the uh, Eastern Expressway that connects from, uh, uh, you know, VTCST station right up to, uh, you know, kind of Ghatkopar and 
the eastern suburbs so i think it's if we really want to do it we definitely can it's just about applying the right time and the right resources to the right causes i think that in the uh, the minds and the uh, or and the hearts of the average citizen of a city there has to be a pride in the city one lives in and i think that uh, in many ways uh, on one hand while bwsl has certainly touched the average life the average lives of a mumbaiker in terms of uh, improving their quality of life it is such a beautiful and aesthetic uh, site that it provides in at least you know the inspiration to do bigger and greater things which i think that when you actually look at it from a uh, uh, from a from a grander perspective uh, you know it 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 signals in some way an aspiration to do you know bigger and better as we move along